Neonicotinoids are a, a class of chemical that has been used in, uh, uh, as a pesticide in, ag uh, in agriculture for about the last 20 years or so. Being neuro neurotoxins, they obviously have a toxic effect if given in a large enough dose. Uh, the big question is whether the doses that pollinators get in the field are large enough to have an effect. And at the moment, uh, we're not quite sure about that. Well, there's been a number of studies um, done on the effects of neonicotinoids on bees. Uh, they divide down into two different classes of studies. One are laboratory studies, and there's particularly there's three of them have been done relatively recently. And there are other field-based studies, uh, and there's about five of them in total. The problem is that they give different results. Um, the laboratory studies say that neonicotinoids uh, are likely to have an effect in the field. The field studies say that actually we can't see an effect if we measure it in the real situation. So we have a bit of an impasse here and what we are trying to do is try to understand why that impasse exists. I think one of the problems we have uh, I with the laboratory studies, uh, there are several problems with the laboratory studies. First of all, they are in the laboratory so they are therefore unnatural um, and they are not um, uh, exposing the pollinators, in this case honeybees or bumblebees, um, to natural foraging situations. So there's, a, there's a, an unrealistic element to it. But um, the, the individuals who have carried out those studies have had to dose the bees with a certain amount of uh, these ne ne neonicotinoid pesticides. And in general the doses that have been given have been higher than one tends to find in the field, um, as far as we can see. Certainly in one of the studies they were a lot higher. Uh, in the two other studies they were either at what we think is the threshold of effect or above the threshold of effect. There, there are issues around how one simulates the effects of bees feeding in the wild when in the laboratory. And the way that it's normally done in the laboratory is to feed um, sugar solution or syrup uh, to the bees. Uh, the bees then um, uh, obviously start to forage on that, but actually there's quite a large literature that says once a bee finds a good food source, it goes back to it again and again and it starts to forage more and more, so it, it takes more of a good thing. So what we think has happened potentially in laboratory studies, because we haven't, the, the, the doses haven't actually been measured directly, is that bees have probably ended up overdosing themselves as a result of this kind of behaviour. One of the big differences between the field and laboratory studies is that the laboratory studies make the assumption, in general, that uh, bees are feeding entirely on crops that have neonicotinoids in them. And what we're finding, and uh, what the latest study has definitely found, is that bees do not feed only on the crop. So, so what we find is a difference between the field studies and the laboratory studies. And what is beginning to emerge is that in laboratory studies, um, there's probably overdosing going on uh, relative to the field studies. Uh, and that's partly because um, in the field, there's not as high as much, there's not as much neonicotinoid in some of the flowers as has been, as, has been assumed in the laboratory studies and also because the bees themselves are foraging on other things so it's diluting those effects. Uh, and, and as a result we think that the bees in the field are getting a much lower dose than the laboratory and that dose is below the threshold that starts to see behavioural effects. All the effects that we see tend to be sublethal effects. Um, so it, 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 what we, we, we see is neurological changes in these bees. It doesn't kill them outright. It tends to change their behavior. It reduces their foraging um, capabilities and that sort of thing. Uh, but if those effects did happen in the field, we would expect to see much lower growth rates of bee colonies, uh, lower reproductive rates. And most of the studies that have been looked at so far don't find that. One of, the, one of the most interesting things is that we have a lot of oilseed rape out there in the landscape and as a crop it does very well, but as a crop it needs insects to, to do well, so it needs insect pollinators. And 
Uh, the interesting aspect of this is that we are actually carrying out a big experiment in the landscape which suggests to us that actually the crops don't kill the pollinators because if the crops killed the pollinators the crops themselves would not do very well. So I, you know I, it, it's, it's just a, it's an observational effect but it nevertheless is an interesting one and uh, one that I, I think needs to be followed up with further research. I think the, the way forward with this is um, clearly t to be very careful because we know that pollinators are important um, and we don't want to be, we certainly don't want to be killing pollinators. But at the same time we have to balance that against uh, the agricultural production. Um, we do need to grow food. So what that does is puts us in, in, a, in a position where we have to step forward uh, very carefully um, uh, and in my view what we should be doing is putting in um, large-scale experiments to uh, understand how neonicotinoids potentially affect pollinators. It's not if they affect pollinators, I think they do affect pollinators, it's just whether it's significant or not. And even if it is significant, I think it's a matter of asking the question, well, how can we mitigate that? Uh, do we reduce the amount of neonicotinoid we're using in seed dressings, for example? Um, or if it's really bad, do we, do we ban it completely? But I don't think we're in the position of wanting to ban it completely at the moment. If one moves to a ban, then you don't have the opportunity to um, understand more about how these um, technologically quite advanced chemicals can be used in the landscape. Um, and uh, without that understanding, we're never going to progress.